They want real solutions, real jobs, and a real vision. They want a vision for America. A vision for America. And like the movie, they are desperate for a new day. With that, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes the gentleman from New York, Mr. Higgins, for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to celebrate the National Trust for Historic Preservation's 65th National Preservation Conference, which will be held in my community of Western New York next week. Over 200,000 people from across over 2,000 people from across the country and around the world will converge on Buffalo to be immersed in our considerable and remarkable architecture. What makes this conference unique is that our community's historic preservation assets are the very reason the conference is being held there. The centerpiece will be the numerous buildings, homes, parks, neighborhoods that were remarkable upon their construction and will help grow us in the future. This conference will provide international validation to what many in Western New York have long known and understood, that our ability thrives lives in recapturing the potential of what we have built in the past, and we are doing just that. Buffalo is home to the nation's first park and parkway system, designed in the 19th century by the famed landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted, where 1,200-acre parklands are some of the very best in all the world. The Buffalo Olmsted Parks Conservancy is leading a multi-million dollar effort to restore the park so Western New Yorkers can visit and can appreciate and enjoy them for decades to come. Meanwhile, we are meticulously restoring buildings integral to our architectural legacy. These include the Darwin Martin House, the Greycliff Estate by Frank Lloyd Wright, the Guarantee Building by Lewis Sullivan, the Buffalo Psychiatric Center by Henry Hobson Richardson, and the Hotel Lafayette by one of America's first female architects, Louise Blanchard Bethune. These efforts are not just examples of historic preservation. They represent a new confidence that we can take charge of our own future by reclaiming our past. Mr. Speaker, historic preservation efforts in Buffalo and Western New York also demonstrate the importance of partnerships between the federal government and the private sector. Without these partnerships, many pre preservation projects would never get off the ground. Federal tools like the Historic Preservation Tax Credit and the New Markets Tax Credit bring builders, investors, development professionals together, and they have the capacity to turn around entire communities. In Buffalo, $64 million of New Market Tax Credits investment have occurred since 2005. This investment has leveraged projects totaling over $141 million in our community. The New Markets Program has encouraged the redevelopment of the Oak School Lofts, Ellicott Commons, the Electric Tower, the Webb Lofts, Asbury Hall, AMA's Warehouse Lofts, 567 Exchange Street, the Larkin Exchange uh, Complex, the Erie Lackawanna Train Station in Jamestown, and the Innovation Center at the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus. All of these projects involved either a restoration of an, a historic vacant building or new construction in an economically distressed area. Mr. Speaker, I support legislation that would extend the new market tax program and authorize it at $5 billion or more a year. And I support extending the historic preservation tax credit because I have seen in Buffalo how cost effective and successful this program can be. Older industrial areas like Buffalo will be able to compete and succeed in a globalized economy if their leaders develop a culture of innovation and create new economic opportunities while taking advantage of the unique assets of the past. Buffalo and Western New York are ready to meet that challenge. I congratulate those who have led this effort to host this important conference, especially Bob Skirker and Kathleen Schweitzer, Catherine Schweitzer, and the hundreds of Western New Yorkers who will make this conference a success. To the conference attendees and visitors from all around the world, I would say our community is honored to host you and proud to show off our unique architecture and historic assets. I promise you will not be disappointed. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Texas, Ms. Jackson Lee, for five minutes. Without objection, so ordered. 
Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much for yielding to me this morning. Uh, I wanted to share with my colleagues uh, an important challenge that we have, and I think some would say how obvious uh, with a 9% unemployment, which I think we should uh, be honest with ourselves and realize that it has been uh, an accident uh, that uh, has been long in coming, uh, almost as if uh, one uh, uh, slowed down on a rainy day and looked as if one was following the prudent rules of the road and decided to, in a moment's notice, not only speed, but uh, speed through a stop sign, an accident waiting to happen. Uh, we have, of course, uh, had uh, spending uh, without accountability in two wars, Iraq and Afghanistan, preceding uh, this administration, and, of course, tax cuts for the top 1% of the uh, population, many of whom who acknowledge uh, that where there is opportunity and benefit, there must be sacrifice uh, and contribution. And if we were to engage them in a reasoned discussion, uh, we would find out, of course, that they would be willing to invest in America. I don't call it taxation. None of us enjoy uh, getting that uh, bill that deals with taxes, but we do understand the value of investing in America. Yesterday, we debated uh, three trade bills. All of them are my friends. I have had the opportunity to engage uh, with the communities represented by South Korea, uh, Panama, and Colombia. And let me say in particular on Panama, uh, my grandfather uh, worked on the Panama Canal. Uh, and uh, the evidence is not his words to me since he died before I was born, but it is the evidence of his name being printed uh, in the annals of the Panamanian history of the canal right there at the canal site that I have visited on many occasions. What an emotional moment to see his name uh, arise as one who helped construct and build uh, in the 1900s amongst all the devastation of mosquitoes and disease. Uh, he survived and helped build the Panama Canal. So we have a long-standing relationship with him. We have a long-standing relationship with the canal. Uh, but the trade bills, for me, should answer one question, uh, and I respect those who voted for it. Will it have uh, an infusion of opportunity for those who have lost their jobs? Unlike some comments by presidential candidates running for this job, I don't believe if you're unemployed uh, and if you are not rich, it is your fault. Uh, there are college graduates who are unemployed today. There are skilled artisans and uh, those who are in the trades who are unemployed today. There are returning veterans, young men and women, who led almost multinational companies in terms of uh, the jobs that they had in the military in Iraq and Afghanistan. How do I know? Because I have visited them and seen them in operation. If you are over the logistics of moving um, equipment and moving men and women and you're 25 years old, I can assure you, you know how to work in a large corporation. There's no evidence. Uh, that these bills being passed at this time will in fact bring down the unemployment. I believe our chief responsibility is to find work for the American people. One of the challenges of the language of the trade bill is the question of protecting our intellectual property. Intellectual property creates jobs. It protects the genius of America. And of course, all of us in our history books have known about the origins of the telephone and uh, uh, we know the origins of uh, the uh, light bulb, if you will, uh, with some of the geniuses that we've known in our early history. Uh, many of us have heard of uh, George Washington Carver, who did a lot with the peanut. America knows how to invent. We know how to do research. I have the privilege of having in my jurisdiction and surrounding areas the Texas Medical Center, where some of the most outstanding research is being done on cancer, uh, what seems to be an epidemic in this country. And so I argue that we did not have sufficient protections for intellectual property. But here is the key, in addition to not having a direct correlation and an oversight on the passage of these bills, which passed in the Senate last night, and the correlation of creating jobs that our population, our citizens, those that we are here to protect, those who we are here to create a pathway of economic opportunity would have a nexus of jobs. That's what you need to prove to me. 
And so I believe that we are missing a manufacturing strategy. Uh, strategy. It is interesting that we consider that old stuff, how proud we were of the Model T. I believe that we cannot go forward on trade bills, Mr. Speaker, until we focus on manufacturing in America, make it in America, putting people back to work of all levels of education. That's going to be my cause for now, forever and ever. I want America back to work. It's a great nation, the greatest country in the world. Let us focus on our folks getting jobs and getting our folk back to manufacturing, making things, selling things, and America continues to serve this world as the greatest democracy and the greatest country in the world. I yield back. The gentlewoman's time has expired. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the Chair declares the House in recess until 11.30 a.m. today. The House returns for legislative work at 11.30 Eastern. Members will begin work on a bill to prevent health insurance plans offered under the new health care law. From